So the TRC recommendation is for the front yard, a recommendation of denial. To the side yard, which is the north side, a recommendation of approval. Um, side yard on the south side, a recommendation of denial. And for the rear yard, a recommendation of denial. Carmel, in the event there is a denial, can they immediately apply for the administrative waiver? Yes, they may. Can we over override that administrative waiver process here today? Yes, we can. With the approval and denial, it sounds to me like the house just needs to be residual. That's one way to accomplish any. Now, this feels into the right. What is the story on that? Because I couldn't tell based on the I went down there. Mm -hmm. Couldn't tell if it was part of this property, if they own that property, or if it belongs to the neighbor that faces um, the Actually, the applicant owns several lots in this area. They do own the, the property to the south, which has that, um, the survey calls it a carport, um, mm -hmm. and it sits on a lot by itself. Now that looks fairly new. How did that get there? That shed was there for a while, and I don't have the pictures of having the staff um, in my what they did, they repaired, they made some, that was the shed before, and they just made it into a living quarter? Not that I'm aware of. Um, the applicant had to share that with me, but I've, I've heard that, but we don't have any record of that being a dwelling. Um, but it does sit on a separate lot, separate from the subject. And it meets setbacks, that or No, it doesn't meet the rear yard setback. Um, the side yard, their side yard to the north is questionable. Um, the, sur the survey that was presented doesn't give those details. And that was one of the concerns too with the five foot setback, the closeness it will be to the, that existing structure. And the fire department, um, they, they do have concerns when we start reducing setback from 10 feet, anything less than 10 feet, they, they get a little concerned. Based, based on, if I understand what you have just got through saying, with the administrative variance, you could, you could drop it from 10 to 8. So if on two sides, up to two sides on right, the right, right. If, if you adjusted the front yard to 48, then that would satisfy the, the, the rear yard. And if you adjusted the location of the house to eight feet instead of nine feet, mm -hmm. then that would give him a foot more on the other side. So he's actually at that point only giving up two feet of deck right. to make it fit in within the administrative variances that staff are willing to keep. Yes, sir. And I believe there are contract, contractors here that can, you know, give reasons as to where we can't do this because of... We'll, we'll find out. Okay. Any other questions, any other discussions at this time? Thank you. Is the applicant here or anybody on behalf of the applicant and would you like to give us some additional information? Uh, yes, sir. My name is James Cunningham. I live at 2320 River Hill Drive in uh, Valdosta, Georgia. And uh, what we're trying to do with this home is keep from going up. Uh, we want to keep it in one story. Okay. You know, when we when we get older, we know stairs are going to be a problem. And so that is the reason why we're trying to just keep it at one level. Could you live 
with an eight foot setback instead of nine and give up a couple of feet of deck to meet the, the eight foot setback on the other side. Sure. And if you reposition in order to take advantage of the administrative variance on the front yard, which would then alleviate the backyard setback requirement. I'm just asking if staff, back up, if the board denied it and went and you went back to staff and said, where can we build it with the 20% administrative variance? That means right. instead of nine foot on this drawing, we'll have eight foot on that side. The house is going to move over one foot. Correct. That's going to increase from five to six foot. And I'm saying that you're going to shave two more feet off of that deck to meet the yes. eight foot. Yes, sir. And by the administrative variance on the front, reducing it to 48 feet, which is going to allow you to pull the house forward slightly, which would then make you able to meet the rear yard set. Correct, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Well, then it is two sides. So a variance would still be needed to one side. And we would grant a variance on the front yard. Mm -hmm. Come on. But, you know, if you get right down to it, this board could turn around right here and say we will grant you an eight foot variance on both sides. We can grant you a variance on the front of whatever the 48 requirement is and the back. And we have now encompassed the administrative function by the board because the board has within within their power we can do this. Yes, sir. You're right. You're right. You have the authority, yes. And that's that's what I'm trying to do is Number one, find out if you can live with that, and number two, at least put it before the board for them to think about. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. no okay. Any other questions, I discussions? Go ahead. Is this the situation that would be better served for them to make an ex parte plan and go ahead and get the Are we, is, are we putting the cart before the horse? No. Okay, we're all right. That's offered to them many times. They didn't ask for it this week and we make a decision next week. Any other questions? Any other discussions? Is there anyone else here to support that would like to give us any information? I just want to answer a question. I'm Glenda Cunningham, um, his spouse, 2320 River Hill Drive. You asked a question about the carport. Right. I didn't know that it was on the It's on our property. Okay. And so it, it adjoins. So where the house would be, it would be like if it was our carport. If we pulled in, the house would face this way. And if we pulled in, it would be like our carport. That's what it is. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone here in opposition to this request or does anyone have questions about what is being requested? Was there any response to your office call that? Yes, there was a couple of inquiries, um, more questions to, to understand the request, but no direct opposition. With no stated opposition. Any other questions, any other discussions? Anybody want to talk about what we have talked about, try to flesh something out? I entertain a motion on this request. I'll make a motion that we approve the the front yard setback to I guess forty eight feet is what's within the twenty percent, correct? Uh, and go ahead and that would be the variance and then which is what's needed correct and then the others could fall within the administrative allowance right yes so we only need one variance okay that would be my motion I'll second 
but, but will they still have to go through the administrative variance process? Yes. Is, is there a cost to that? There's a cost to that. No, there's no, no cost. Okay. Just some their time. Okay. Okay. okay, I have I have motion on the floor from Mr. McCall to grant a variance based on a 48 foot setback front yard setback front yard setback I'm sorry, front yard and that is the only part of the motion the other variance that is being requested is being denied uh, well if, if we don't grant it in effect is denied correct is that correct but they can still be the But that puts it back into her courts for the administrative variance. Yeah. It will take what the, the two foot off of the side. That will be the administrative variance right. that Carmella is talking about. The only right. thing that we're That's asking about is the front yard. I just don't want right. circumvent the process. And then that puts it into her court to use the administrative variance to give you eight foot on either side. I have motions on the floor, Mr. McCall, to grant the front yard with a 48 foot distance. <coughs> and the other requests are denied because they are not being granted. I have seconds for Ms. Gaskins. Do I have, I'm sorry, everybody in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous, good luck with it. Please give it to Carmella and she'll flesh it out for you so you can get it like you need. Okay, thank you, sir. Please let the minute show that Ms. Gaskins had a prior commitment and uh, had to leave. The next case that we will listen to is VAR 2013-08, Rodney Tierney, on behalf of Citizens Community Bank, Coppage Road, Valdosta. Yes, sir. Um, of note, the TRC has not rendered a recommendation on this particular variance request in hopes of mediating between the applicant and an adjacent property. But this is an attempt um, by the applicant to request a variance to the to chapter four that provides that no lot existing at the time of the adoption of this UODC shall be reduced, divided, or changed so as to produce a lot or tract of land which does not comply with the minimum dimensional area requirements. And what we have in this case is an attempt by the applicant to record a survey flat. And by recording the survey flat, we're in essence creating a landlocked parcel of land. And it was staff's idea that the two parties work together in partnership um, and request one variance instead of, instead of two separate variants. We did try to reach out to the adjacent property owner and they're willing, but the applicant, you know, they, they want to move forward with their own variance request. So in the end, at the end of the day, um, if this variance is approved, the landlock parcel will have to come before you all and request their own variance um, to the county's lot frontage requirements. Um, and at this time, you know, staff, you know, there is a recorded easement. He's not totally landlocked. He's landlocked in the sense that his lot doesn't have frontage on a county maintained road, but he does have a recorded easement. Um, is the recorded easement across the property that we we're talking about? in the current D flat or is it adjacent? It's uh, across the subject property. And I believe there's a survey flat in your, in your packet that shows that particular. of this request. Um, 
we did talk with the applicant, and the applicant is, again, they, they really want to move on with the request. Their representative is here today um, to verify that. They want to move forward. I, I drove out there where the sign is, and I drove in that field gate. It doesn't look like anybody drives in there. I mean, there's not like a well-worn path that, where, where do they go in and out now? The subject property? or the landlock. The landlock property. They access the property from Valdale Road, which is the top of there. The landlock piece access their property from Valdale. And that's where their easement is? Yes. But that other piece of property goes all the way around them. So they have, they have a little easement through that thing, too. Yes, they cut across. The easement does cut across the subject, subject property by that point. So while the landlock property owner, they, you know, they're open to redoing lot lines if the subject property is willing work with them, but I, I don't know the relationship between the two, and perhaps the applicant can speak on that. Um, but yes, the subject property wraps around that. And it's been like that since they recorded that warranty be around 2000. And we had an opportunity, staff, Jason and I had an opportunity to speak with the owner of that particular tract, and it, it was to his surprise. applicant and they're willing um, to hatch out this portion of property just to put on record that the recording of this plat doesn't record that landlock piece. Um, we were trying to think of ways to, to do that and that's one solution we came up with if they just hatched that area out. He has a note on here already that says out but something um, just to, you know, put on record that it's, this landlock is not being recorded. Just so I understand, if, if, if this variance is denied, then that limits what the bank can do with this piece of property, correct? That is correct. And this property's for sale, so I'm guessing that somebody wants to buy it. Yes, I do believe they have a Does the buyer know that it's a crazy yeah, piece of property? Does the buyer know that all this is going on? I'm or? not sure. Um, or maybe we don't need to go there. I'm not sure. That doesn't protect us. Yeah. So with that, um, Mr. Davenport is here. Um, do you eat reviews flats? And this came up, you know, as part of their review, and it just wasn't adding up. So when we finally put the pieces together, um, when this landlock parcel was created, it was done by a warranty. And back then, the county had requirements of lot frontage, and it was just <coughs> created illegally. How does the cemetery feel? The cemetery is very important in this landlock piece. Cemetery is its own parcel as well. Um, cemeteries are created all um, but how that plays into this, the cemetery just wouldn't be able to get any permits to do anything unless they to request for the variance. But even in that, it doesn't meet our five acre minimum requirement.
But this easement services the cemetery. It's two separate, two different areas that you can put and that goes to the cemetery, and then there's a 40 foot easement that goes to that land office.